Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Crime Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Today, I'll be discussing the unsolved murder of TV's first Superman, George Reeves. Here's what's inter interesting about this case. This thing about George Reeves' death is that it was actually ruled as a suicide. I will explain that, you know, further along in the video, but though it was ruled a suicide, there are plenty of unanswered questions. Now, when I was younger, I knew about this case since I was a huge Superman fan and I still love Superman, but this story is filled with crazy stuff. This case involves conspiracy, rumors, lust, and scandal. Here we go. George Reeves was actually born as George Kiefer Brewer on January 5th, 1914 to parents Donald and Helen Lesher in Woolstock, Iowa. Y'all might be wondering why George's last name was different from his parents. Well, his parents actually divorced not long after he was born, so George was given his mother's maiden name. After the divorce, George and his mother moved to Galesburg, Illinois. Later on, they would move again to live with her sister in California. When the mother and son moved to California, Helen met Frank Joseph Pacello in 1925. The two started dating, then eventually married each other. George's biological father was also remarried to a woman named Helen Schultz. Which is weird that the man married a woman who had the same first name as his wife. After this marriage, George would never see his father again. Two years after the couple got married, Frank adopted George as his own and George would become George Bessello. Fifteen years after George's mother Helen was married to Frank, they divorced. Now George was away with a relative while all of this happened so he was unaware of the divorce, but when he got back home his mother stated that Frank killed himself. The truth was that the man didn't kill himself at all, and I can't see why his mother would lie like i would assume that george grew close to his adoptive father and wouldn't it have been best for him to not mourn the loss of a man he like who a man who never died in the first place and why you know just tell the truth it just sucks how george lived the rest of his life believing that his adoptive father died but what's done is done after george was enrolled in high school he began to act and sing. When he graduated, George enrolled in Pacenda Junior College where he continued to act. During a play he was part of in college, it caught the attention of a casting director. George and the casting director got in contact with each other and eventually landed him a role in Gone with the Wind as one of Scarlett O'Hara's suitors. Later on, he was contracted to Warner Brothers and changed his professional name to George Reeves. Other movies that George would appear in were Torrid Zone, Fightening 69th, and The Strawberry Blown. On September 22, 1940, George married Eleonora Needles, who he met in college. The wedding took place in San Gabriel, California. Two years after the marriage, he appeared in the movie So Proudly We Hail, then was drafted in the U.S. Army in 1943. While George was in the Army, he served in the Air Force. He was still able to use his acting ability as he served because the Air Force had a Broadway show called Winged Victory, which he was a part of. When World War II ended, he returned to Hollywood. After 10 years of marriage, George and Eleonora divorced in 1950. In June of 1951, George was offered the role of a lifetime as Superman in the TV series titled Adventures of Superman. But to George, he wasn't sure if he wanted to accept the role. At the time, he and other actors saw TV as unimportant and that only a few people would see the new series. Today, we, ob we obviously know how wrong they were. Eventually, he agreed to take the role for one reason. He needed the money. So he began his career as Superman in a movie titled Superman and the Mole Men, which pretty much served as a pilot for the TV series. According to co-stars like Jack Larson, who played Jimmy Olsen, Phyllis Coates, who played Lois Lane, then Noel Neal, 
was recasted for the role, they all got along with George extremely well. ABC, which was a struggling network at the time, bought the show and aired the Adventures of Superman series on September 19th, 1952. The premiere of the series basically became a hit, especially with kids, and George pretty much became a celebrity. As the actors worked on the show, they were placed on restrictive contracts, so they weren't allowed to work on projects while they were filming but they were allowed to act in other projects after each season was over. George did act in roles in Forever Female and The Blue Gardenia. Unfortunately, it was difficult for George to get other roles because he was associated, he was so associated with Superman. Despite the challenges he faced as an actor, he did enjoy the role as Superman, and he took it seriously, especially since he was a role model for the kids who viewed the series. He would never smoke where any child could see him, and it eventually made him quit. After he finished filming each season, he would cut out the S onto Superman suit, then send it to kids who were sick in the hospital or send it to a child as a birthday present, then would burn the rest of the suit. He pretty much kept his private life and professional life in completely separate places. They were completely apart. Like I mentioned earlier on in this video, there is scandal and lust involved in this case. In George's case, he lived at, he lived a very scandalous, scandalous personal life filled with lust. During his time as Superman, he began an affair with former showgirl Tony Mannix. The thing was that this lady was married to MGM general manager Eddie Mannix. What baffles me is that he knew about the affair and approved of it. This affair was basically what they would call an open secret in Hollywood. Eddie and Tony Mannix were Roman Catholics, so they didn't believe in divorce. So Eddie gave Tony the choice to do whatever you know she wanted to do. Now, I'm not Catholic. I'm a born-again Christian. I don't believe that it takes good works to get into heaven. I believe that salvation isn't anything to be worked for, but it is a free gift from God that can never be taken away by repentance and receiving Jesus Christ alone to be one's one and only savior. Adultery is pretty much wrong and I definitely don't believe in open marriage. As for George and Tony, they still did what they wanted to do and from what George's friends have mentioned, the two really took care of each other by, you know, buying each other gifts. After the second season of Adventures of Superman, George wanted a better salary. At first, ABC wouldn't give him what he wanted, so he almost left the show. They eventually decided to give him $5,000 a week, which is at least $50,000 a week in today's standards. George still wanted to do more with his career, so he established a production company and was interested in making an adventure TV series, which he titled Port of Entry. Unfortunately, George you know, wasn't able to raise enough money to fund the project. He still wanted to do other stuff though, so he did sing on the Tony Bennett show in August of 1956 and appeared on I Love Lucy a year later. As I've mentioned before, he genuinely enjoyed playing the role of Superman, but he was getting older and felt as if he was wasting his life. There was a blessing for George because he landed a prominent role on a Disney Western movie titled Westward Ho to the Wagons. By 1958, George ended his long affair with Tony when he was engaged to Leonor Lemon, who was this society playgirl. The end of the affair and the new engagement completely devastated Tony. Leonore, on the other hand, was known to be aggressive. She would have tempers when she drank, which would push George's friends away, and she was known to even have mob connections in New York. George planned to marry Leonore on June 19, 1959, despite the financial troubles he was having and the cancellation of Adventures of Superman didn't help much. On June 15, 1959, George and Lenore argued at a restaurant and it was rumored that George didn't want to marry Lenore. They left for home after the argument, according to witnesses. According to Lenore, she and George went to see a wrestling match, but Jean LaBelle, the wrestler who was supposed to fight in the match, was a friend of George and didn't see him or Lenore there. Overall, 
the couple did get back to their home and George was in bed by midnight. To his surprise, a couple of friends of Leonore's named William B Bliss and Carol Van Ronkel arrived to the house to basically party. This upset George and he walked downstairs to complain about the noise. He eventually calmed down, walked back downstairs to drink alcohol, then got back upstairs as he was aggravated. Later on, the guest heard a gunshot go off upstairs. William Bliss ran upstairs to see what happened, then saw George naked on his bed facing upward. Police were called, then arrived between 1.30 to 2 a.m. to find George dead with a gunshot wound to the head. What was found in the bathroom was a .35 caliber between his feet with no fingerprints, five random bullet holes in the room, no powder burns on his body, and a shell casing found under his body. Yet the police ruled this death a suicide. When the information was released to the public, people were shocked, and children were devastated to hear that the man who played Superman killed himself with a gun. For the kids who were fans of the show, not only were they heartbroken, but they found it so ironic. Here were, you know, you have this hero who doesn't get hurt by bullets, they bounce right off him, yet the actor who plays him is shot and killed, allegedly by suicide. As for those close to George, they didn't believe he committed suicide, neither did his mother, Helen. People close to him found that he had so much to live for. There were plans to revive Adventures of Superman. He still wanted to direct a sci-fi film, which he discussed with his former co-star, Phyllis Coates, who played the first Lois Lane in the series. Despite what friends said, police thought that since he had a .27 per count, alcohol level, which is really high, had a drinking problem and was depressed, they didn't believe that it was crazy enough for him to commit suicide. But as I hear this, like, how could they find a naked man who was dead with no fingerprints on the gun as someone who committed suicide? Like, since the sh shell was, you know, since the shell casing was under his body, the fatal bullet hole was in the ceiling and no fingerprint on the gun, people believed that someone murdered him now with all the facts and all the evidence that you know pretty much is there it doesn't really seem to me either that this man even killed himself what was odd about the investigation was that there were no crime scene photos the op the autopsy was done at the wrong time and no one was brought in for questioning George's mother, Helen, was bent on finding out who killed her son. This is where the theories take place. One theory is that Leonore is the one responsible for his death. Since there were rumors that George was going to call off the wedding, Le Leonore was furious with George. She went into the room, shot five random holes into the bedroom, then shot him in the head by accident because she didn't believe there were any bullets left. Years later, Leonore got a phone conversation with Superman historian and founder of the Superman Museum, Jim Hambrick. On the phone call, these words were said. Leonore said, do you want to hear that I killed George Reeves? Jim Hambrick replied by saying, well, only if you did. Leonore replied with this, okay, I killed George Reeves. Are you satisfied? Then she ended the call. Once again, it's hard to tell if she was being serious or not, but out of respect for the dead, she should have said no. Once again, this doesn't help her case at all. The second theory is that Tony Mannix killed George. It's believed that she was so devastated when he ended the affair, she hired a hitman who went upstairs as Leonore opened the door to talk with William Bliss. When the hitman made it to the room, he shot and killed George. Friends of George and even film historian Jim Beaver believed that Tony loved George too much to want him dead. The last theory is that Eddie Mannix was responsible for George's death. Since Tony was so upset about the affair ending, Eddie was furious with George for making his wife upset, so he hired someone to kill George. Because he had a lot of power as a film studio general manager, he used his influence to keep the police from investigating the case to protect Tony from scandal. According to private investigator Milo Spur Spurry Leo, I believe that's how you spell his last name, who George's mother Helen hired as a private investigator to investigate. 
he realized how back then he reveals how back then celebrities and especially film studios were protected from scandals and as we can see today things haven't really changed at all I'll get back to my final thoughts on the theories soon. George's mother had the body frozen so that it could have a second autopsy. After the autopsy, it was revealed that there was a probability of homo homicide. When George's funeral took place, Leonor was nowhere to be found. The lady actually left town. Before leaving town, she somehow broke into the crime scene to grab alcohol and a traveler check that George signed for their honeymoon. Back to my final thoughts on the theories. For me, I honestly don't know what to believe. From what people, from people who knew Tony, I believe she's the one who's least likely to be involved with George's death. Overall, I believe it's least likely that he, like once again, I believe it's least likely that he even committed suicide. As for Leonor and Eddie. I'm really just not sure. Like, what's unfortunate about this case is that the people who could have known about what happened have all passed. Tony, Leonor, Eddie, they're not with us anymore. Unfortunately, George isn't with us anymore either, and he was a talented actor who lost his life in such a senseless way. People who knew George will always remember him as someone who was kind, generous, a uh, southern gentleman, fun-loving, and most of all, honest George. Even though it seems hopeless that we'll never know the truth, I pray that the truth will be revealed someday. But I do find peace with the fact that God knows exactly what happened. And he will or has made sure that justice was done because the God I serve is a God of justice. That's all I've got to say. If you'd like to see more true crime videos from me, please feel free to subscribe. If you'd like to, you know, like this video, please hit the like button. Feel free to share your thoughts about this case in the comment section. And if you'd like to um, have me cover a certain true crime case, please feel free to let me know. I'll see y'all next week for True Crime Tuesdays. Thank you for taking the time in your day to watch this. And I'll talk to y'all later.